What's going on YouTube? SoCal Seth here, back again with another packing tutorial. Taking that packing game from basic to ninja level. This episode we're going for tropical, warm weather, beach and pool. Let's get started. Have you smashed the like button for the YouTube algorithm? Any questions, comment below and be sure to subscribe for more content. Let's jump into it. Okay, to start, we'll go over pieces I use for travel. We'll start with a four wheeled roller and also a duffel bag. Also, we have another duffel bag as well as a textile backpack. Okay, since I do pack carry on only, I bring only two of the four bags. And each bag has its own purpose. Like for this one, this is an international carry-on from Tumi. It does meet all international uh, carry-on measurements. What I like about this bag, A, it's got the four wheels. It glides nice and easy through the airport. B, it has a front lid open for easy access. It also has a little hook if you do need to bring a suit for business travel. And it also, is very handy in this clamshell style suitcase. It even has the uh, straps to be able to strap everything down so things don't shift around. And this bag is made from a ballistic grade nylon, so it is very durable. Uh, I've had this uh, particular bag for uh, quite a few years now, and it's held up very well. And the, uh, the hardware on it is still very sturdy, and um, this still basically looks brand new, even though I've traveled quite a bit with it. Uh, I do like Tumi products. They have lasted me a while. I know they are on the expensive side, but they do absolutely last. This bag you guys have also seen before. This is a duffel from Tumi as well. Uh, this bag is absolutely great as a secondary bag. One, because it has, with its dimensions, it actually fits underneath the airplane seat in front of me, so it's a great uh, secondary. It also has this add-a-bag sleeve, so I can just slip this over the uh, four-wheeled roller and just glide on through the airport. It has a lot of room on the interior, as well as it does have two zippers, that, so it does expand out wider. And in this front pocket here, it does have a little hook to keep keys on. It does have a uh, little zippered compartment. This is RFID blocking on the inside here, as well as another little pocket right here. Quick, great for easy access at the airport if you just need to grab something quick, passports, wallet, etc. And this bag is also made from ballistic nylon. It has held up very well. Uh, let's see, I believe it's seven years I've had these last two and they have hold up tremendously for me. Next, this one here is a new one for you guys. This is another, uh, this is the frame soft duffel from Tumi as well. Uh, again, I, I'm a Tumi guy with, with their quality. Their stuff lasts absolutely a long time and I absolutely adore them. But this is another duffel. It can be slid underneath the seat in front of me. And for this one, it does have an easy, access pockets on either side to quick slip in documents or whatever you need while you're going through TSA. On the inside here it is very spacious, also has a little zip area for laptop and etc. It does have a, a little sleeve that's meant to put uh, shoes in on the side here. Oop, get the camera angle back on there. Uh, I personally don't care for that because uh, just takes up extra room in the in the bag, and you know I, I prefer to actually just cut this out. So, but I, which I may actually end up doing. But uh, other than that, it has a lot of great options. On this outer pocket here, it's got a spot for an iPad, some organization for pens and things like that. Another. A little hook for keys if you need, and this is another RFID blocking pocket here. Also made of ballistic nylon, very great quality. Last but not least, we have this textile backpack. This is great for carrying electronics. This is from Ogeo. 
few reasons why I like this bag. It does have a large capacity uh, laptop sleeve here. And the way they designed this bag, there's actually a padded gap at the bottom. So as you're picking up and setting the bag down, you're not constantly hitting the corners of the laptop on the ground as you're carrying around in the bag, which is a great feature. It also has a, this is a hard case to quick store some sunglasses, things like that. It has another little small pocket. And the main compartment does have a lot of space. It also has Another slip here that's padded for an iPad, as well as some organization for pens and miscellaneous stuff, uh, laptop mouse. Has these side pockets here, which hold extra gear. And these ones down here, they fan out, and these actually can hold a water bottle. And on the front side here, it does have a chest strap to hold it against you tighter so you're not getting a whole bunch of back problems. It's very comfy to travel in. Now the phone I have now is a little bit bigger, but uh, this used to be able to hold a phone. I could have the phone hold right in front of me. And it also has a little sleeve here to strap this over your uh, rolling luggage so you can just slip this right on and roll right on through the airport. Moving on to accessories, we have packing cubes. These are from eBags. We have the small size, medium, and large. They come in a multitude of different colors. And my personal favorite are the small size. I have them in this right here. Uh, these actually fit quite a lot, and it's a lot easier to move around the suitcase if you do need to reorganize to so use the small size versus the large, which only fits in one direction. They also have a slim packing cube. This set, unfortunately, they don't make anymore. Once they got bought by Samsonite, I find them to be kind of lacking, but that's another conversation. But they still make this size right here. This is perfect for like socks and underwear, uh, gym clothes, loungewear, things like that. Also, shoe bags or dust bags to help keep the bobs of the shoes from getting the rest of everything in the suitcase dirty. Uh, me personally, I put one shoe per bag. That way it's a lot easier to uh, organize and shift things around if I have to. Now, if you're really stepping it up and bringing a suit along with you, uh, Tumi does make a great uh, suit sleeve for their uh, rolling suitcase, as well as a shirt packer organizer. Basically, you take this board, fold them according to size, and then this has basically, it works like almost like a luggage strap where it goes over and compresses and organizes the shirts, keeps them nice and tidy and prevents wrinkling. I also like to big a big laundry bag with me. Uh, like when we go to Hawaii, there is a washer and dryer in the unit so I can just uh, kind of load this up throughout the week, do a couple loads uh, at the end of the trip. Then I have uh, clean clothes when I get home. In this video, we're going hot weather, tropical, beach or pool. That's going to be the theme. And have some options here. My personal favorite is linen. Have a dressy option. Half button down. Love the band collar style. A little bit more casual with the stripes. Some short sleeves, have some colorful patterns. Floral is another great trend here. Denim. Moisture wicking polo, this is from Ministry of Supply. Best polos on the market. Couple colors. Linen pants. different colors and textures. For the evening, chinos are another great option. Come in a wide variety of colors as well. And also have this button down here that's uh, more of a pool cover up to help block out some of the sun after I've had a, enough time. 
My personal favorite, the V-neck t-shirt. And obviously I have to have a Hot Tub Club t-shirt. If you want one of these, help support me, support the channel. I'll leave a link down below. Another favorite of mine, these are what they call hybrid shorts. These are technically a board short, but they are styled more like, like a regular kind of dr uh, dress short, uh, but they are still made from that board short material. And as you can see, they come in a wide variety of colors and even textured ones here, even camo. These are a great option for traveling to warmer weather because these can go from wet to dry, dry to wet. You can dress these up, dress these down. Another option I like, some denim jean shorts, or as I call them, lazy dukes. And with the hybrid shorts being more plain, I do tend to go a bit more bold when it comes to the swimwear. Have some options here, surfing T-Rexes. And if you are gonna be out in the ocean, I highly recommend a rash guard. It's made from a quick dry fabric, but it also helps protect you from the sun. When you're out in the ocean, the rays tend to radiate off the water, making it even stronger than what you would actually think. So definitely protect yourself. Rounding off the footwear here, for when I'm dressing up, I do like a nice argyle sock, or if I really want to get fun, got some shark socks here. For a sneaker or loafer, I prefer a no-show sock. These are from Bombas, great company. Uh, they are a buy one, donate one type of company. So great cause, great product, and these don't show up uh, on top of the um, top of the rim of the shoe or loafer. Uh, they just hide underneath. So it looks like you're wearing no socks, but you don't get the uh, funk of actually wearing no socks. And personally, you can't pay me to wear a tie ever again, but if I do have to wear a suit or a jacket, I do like to dress it up with a nice pocket square. And a couple of Coke accessories. We have a travel lint roller. I got this at, uh, I believe, the container store. And also some magnetic collar stays. These are from a company called Working Sifts. Basically, you put these into the collar, and they have these magnets that hold them in place. So if you do travel and things are a little bit more wrinkled than you like, uh, this will help uh, keep the collar in place. Okay, and when it comes to footwear, there's a lot of different options that I have here. Now, when going to a uh, beach uh, or pool or kind of a tropical place, I think the color black is a little bit too formal for that. So I have a tendency to wear browns and other colors. So in this case, we have options here, like a Chelsea boot. These are from Western Pearl. These are the most badass Chelsea boots on the planet. I will link to them down below. Another option, if you're going a little bit more dressy, is a double monk strap shoe. Or you have some loafer options. And I know the white loafers are a bold move, but if pulled off correctly, they do look badass. Or these are technically a boat shoe, but these are more of a moccasin style, so I tend to like these better. Very comfortable. Also, some minimal leather sneaks are a great option. Got some chocolate brown, some solid white, light brown. Or you can go to a casual leather sneaker like this. Or even there's uh, options for, I call these more of a fashion sneaker. These are a great option. Or they also have these uh, slip-ons as well. And to go to a sandal or flip-flop or in Hawaii, we call these sleepas. But uh, these I would only reserve for just going directly to the beach or to the pool. I wouldn't be wearing these around, me personally. Now, when traveling with shoes, you do want to take care of them while you're gone, so I do recommend bringing things like these. These are little deodorizing pills, so if you do wear a pair of shoes uh, throughout the day, at the end of the day, you can throw these in there, and they will help uh, remove the moisture and deodorize your shoes, because especially when you're hot and sweaty all the time, they can get very funky very fast. And also, uh, since I do tend to bring white sneakers with me as well, I do bring a cleaning kit because they do get dirty very easily. Uh, just a very simple little 
travel uh, travel kit uh, not going to take up too much room but it is important to uh, take care of yourself so it does last longer the biggest tip when it comes to carry-on packing and this is the absolute most important is to pack in combinations what do i mean by that i'll show you okay now what i mean by packing in combinations i have two examples here i have a very colorful kind of button-down shirt and a uh, white polo shirt these are both very summery very casual but as you can see with this kind of busyness of the shirt it pairs very well with any of like the hybrid shorts that I showed you earlier and the polo shirt since it's more plain up top it will pair very well with a more bold choice of a swim short but if I were to switch them, the polo shirt would still pair very well with all the hybrid shorts. It's a great combination. But with the busyness of this shirt, it doesn't really mix well with the uh, swim shorts that I have selected here. I mean, technically, I guess you could pull it off if you were that bold, but I personally think it's too busy if you have something that's a pattern like this another bold pattern uh, underneath. I try to be more casual on the top, busy on the bottom, or vice versa. So when talking combinations, back to the example from before, I have two shirts and six pairs of shorts here. Just with these items, I have 12 different combinations. So I essentially have more than a week's worth of clothing just using this now you do switch it up and most people when you're traveling they like to bring an outfit for every day i personally don't because most of the time you're not going to see these people again who the heck cares but you can still look good and still reuse and wear okay now we have the dop kit this one's from Tumi as well has a big clear container as well as two smaller ones in here, I have packed a contacts case as well as an extra set, a uh, toothbrush, tongue scraper, floss, and instead of trying to bring a big bottle of mouthwash, Listerine makes these chewable tablets. This is a lot easier. Don't have to go by the 311 rule on that. A little manicure kit, extra razor and blade, and a trimmer for my goatee. Okay, moving on to the most tedious part of the video is the 311 kit, which is basically TSA's rule for anything that smears, sprays, spills, spreads, or spills. And that would be all your liquids. And basically the rule is 3.4 ounces, or for my metric friends, 100 milliliters, to go in a one quart container and one per person. Uh, this bag is TSA friendly. I found this on Amazon. It's a lot easier and bigger since it is squared off and things like that. You can fit more in this than you would in a uh, regular Ziploc bag. Another product I just recently stumbled along is uh, this thing from Tula Trees is the brand. Um, basically, these are silicone and these stretch onto either a glass or a smooth tile surface in a shower. Since most hotels that I've found, uh, they don't give you a lot of storage room in the shower other than using the ledge or the floor, which I think is kind of disgusting. So this way you can kind of hang it up on the side and have it up and out of your way. And it's removable, so that's a good thing. Now when I travel, I like to keep my skincare consistent. That way I feel I'm less likely to break out and things like that. So I know this is a, a pain and most people won't go through this part, but this is what I choose to do. And my favorite skincare system is from Tiege Hanley. It's a very uncomplicated skincare for us men. And basically, they have their system set up in different levels. Uh, level one would be the uh, face wash, AM moisturizer, PM moisturizer, and a facial scrub. And the AM moisturizer has a SPF of 20, which is great. And if you want to upgrade to what they call a level two, that would add the eye cream. And a level three would add the uh, anti-age serum. 
and they also have a acne product and recently came out with a clay mask and I like to funnel these into smaller containers their lip balms they have an SPF of 30 the citrus one of it is my favorite if you are going to bring a bar of soap with you they do make a um, travel size uh, bars of soap as well as body washes these smell fantastic and I will use various methods to uh, funnel these into different containers. And they also make a great uh, body lotion and hand lotion as well. Another brand I like is a brand called Pete and Pedro. My favorite of theirs is the, uh, the Bold. This is a uh, bourbon scented shampoo. And to complement that, they have a, a tobacco cream uh, conditioner or they have another uh, shampoo that's also got a uh, complement of uh, I have an extra bottle of it here argan oil very hydrating this one has a kind of cream sickle scent it's kind of uh, addicting actually their sea salt spray and their body washes are also fantastic this is desperado which is more of like a uh, leather tobacco kind of smell it's absolutely kind of addicting and I personally, I use their hair putty. Best hair product on the market. Now when it comes to cologne, there's a couple ways to do it. I personally don't like to bring a full bottle of cologne with me, but like in this case, this is uh, Aqua de Jo Profundo. You can use, uh, this is basically goes, replaces a little pump cap here and you can spray it into a smaller spray. Or they do make a mini size that you can kind of funnel into that as well. Or you can go to like some fragrance discounters also make, uh, this is basically a travel spray. It has a little twist like that. I believe this is uh, uh, Dolce & Gabbana, The One Gentleman, another great summertime fragrance. And of course, we all like to smell extra good. So for deodorant, I personally like these. Uh, these are from Native. They're uh, citrus uh, herbal musk and sea salt cedar are two of my favorites for right now i like to make a smaller version of this it's a lot easier to carry around or sometimes i will even bring a more uh, natural bar of soap along and that will get packed along with my hairbrush into a uh, another plastic container so it's because these have a tendency to get real soaping kind of nasty this will separate it out from everything so it doesn't uh, get all over the place When traveling, sun care is also very important. Like for me, I'm very fair skinned, so I burn like a politician in church. Uh, Tej Hanley makes a great uh, sun stick. And another favorite product of mine is Sun Bum. This is also a reef safe sunscreen. So for those of you uh, that maybe don't know, like in Hawaii, uh, they have uh, banned certain sunscreens with certain uh, ingredients that do kill the reefs off. This does not fall into that category. These are fantastic. These are a more natural sunscreen. They have a great smell to it. And so I have an SPF of 30 as well as a face stick here, which is also awesome. This goes on clear. So that way it doesn't uh, show up white, especially if you have like that five o'clock stubble. Perfect. Probably an uncomfortable topic, but it needs to be said. Gentlemen, I recommend, especially if you're traveling to a tropical hot and humid place bring along a talc free powder as well as some body wipes you will thank me in today's world of travel there's a few extras i bring along i do bring some extra masks as well as sanitizer you can bring ones that fit into your 311 kit uh, like these two here from sunbum or honest co or if you do bring more than 3.4 ounces, TSA does allow it, I believe, up to 12 ounces. You just have to declare it. So you would set your 311 kit down and uh, this next to it outside of it. Uh, this one's from Pete and Pedro. As well as some sanitizing wipes. You can either bring a pack along like this, some individual ones. Or another great band is this company called Defense. They use a medical grade tea tree oil. It does have a strong scent at first, but it is very great for sanitizing and easy on the skin as well. Okay, moving on to eyewear. My favorites as of recently are the these from Enemy. 
They have uh, their styles by number. They have their enemy one, more of a Wayfair style. Enemy twos, which is a more of a club master. The enemy threes take on the aviator. And the big style of sunglass, the enemy four, or as I call them, my famous sunglasses. Okay, on to the bling. Now, I've got a couple of uh, organizers. These are from Amazon, but they basic kind of jewelry organizers. Got room underneath to organize things as well. I'd like to bring a couple of fashion watches with me and a couple of different bands to kind of change it up from casual to more dressy. Some bracelets. A few rings. And a couple necklaces. And since with summer style, you don't get a lot of options in terms of layering, but uh, accessories can make the outfit. So very important. And moving on to the topic of accessories, I have here some Anson belts. As you can see, they come in a wide variety of colors and styles. And in my opinion, these are the perfect belts for travel, and I'll show you why here. And the way these belts are designed, they have a micro track system here. And basically, you cut them to size and they just slide right in, click into place. When you want to release, it has a little button right down here at the bottom. They release. And these belts are all interchangeable. So, all you have to do to pack in combinations, you bring a couple of uh, buckles and a couple of belts. And you get many different combinations for many different occasions. Okay, moving on to electronics. I tend to keep it very simple. Over here, have a hard case for my DJI Osmo Mobile 4, which I'm using to shoot. Here, I have a tech organizer from BagSmart. Here, I keep some miscellaneous cords, including some old school headphones and a dual auxiliary thing in case more than one person wants to watch a movie on the same device, as well as a light to take photos in darker light. I also have a portable battery pack, as well as universal adapters. And this is a USB charger from a company called Charge Hub. I uh, forgot what model this is, but this also has a quick charge where I can just lay my phone on top and also charge other devices as well, and the cord for that. I also keep a set of earbuds. And for watching movies, listening to music, things like that on the airplane, I found a couple of methods that work best. Like this device here. Basically clips... Your phone right there and this slides out and this will uh, attach to the uh, airplane uh, tray so that way this holds it up in front of you that way you're not constantly looking down at the screen and uh, kind of giving you neck problems there's this model here which is along the same method this hook this part clips onto the uh, tray table and basically uses a magnet to uh, hold the device up this one is for cell phones they make a larger one for iPads those have been the two best that I've found so far. And for the magnet, uh, I use a magnet in my car. So basically what I do, I get a phone case. I get an extra one. I basically take out this part and then uh, glue on a hard tag. So this can magnetically hold right like that. That way I'm not uh, gluing something that's onto the back of the phone. And that kind of messes up with the quick, quick charge. And another option, let's say you have a bigger size iPad. This is from a company called Seat Dreams. This is basically a organizer. You would slide your large size iPad or uh, device in there. It also has another side that has an organizer, pens, miscellaneous. You can also fit a cell phone in here as well. And a couple options to do it. This can fold in half and kind of depends on the airplane, but uh, sometimes it has that little uh, kind of shelving where you can slip the one side in and that'll basically hold it up like that. Or you can also use this and clip it to the uh, airplane tray with a, I'd probably use a carabiner for that. 
For me, this is a little bit too big and kind of bulky, but if you do have a larger size like an iPad Pro, that'll work perfect. On the topic of in-flight comfort, if I do uh, end up sleeping on the plane, uh, I prefer not to use those neck pillows because I still end up getting a, the neck bob and things like that. This is a product that's here to prevent that. This is a product from Seat Dreams. It is a sleep mask. It normally comes with an extender, which unfortunately I can't find at the moment. But uh, it has an extender that clips in. And basically the extender kind of uh, wraps around uh, part of the headrest. It's kind of built into the seat and you can kind of pull it tighter so it basically uh, kind of straps the back of your head to the seat so that way it prevents the the head bob there and it keeps your head in place and uh, don't get any neck pains when you're on a long flight and trying to sleep. Great product. Nutrition when traveling is also very important. I have some products here, mostly from a company I like called Onnit. Uh, some products I like is there total human optimization they basically have a uh, almost like a vitamin pack for the daytime as well as an evening so basically you take one pack in the morning one pack in the evening and you're good to go keeping consistent with nutrition is very important also here i have uh, their gut health which is a probiotic very important and to help prevent jet lag this is the combination i take here we have a product called Alpha Brain, which is a nootropic, uh, stimulates uh, cognitive function, as well as uh, an immune system booster. This uses uh, turmeric, a uh, energy booster, which uses uh, cordyceps mushrooms, and a serotonin booster, because uh, whether we realize it or not, a lot of stress does happen when travel in the plane, et cetera, et cetera. So your serotonin levels do drop. So I take this to kind of boost it back up to normal. And this pack right here helps me fight off jet lag. And as I'm traveling around, I do use a, a vitamin case here, uh, along with the packets. Uh, these are from Vitacary. These ones are great. They fit into pockets very easily. At least these two do. If I'm taking a lot with me, I'll pack them in this one. And then throughout the day, I'll for the day, I'll transfer them to one of these two here. Another product, this is almost like a, people are probably more familiar with like a emergency type thing, but this essentially does the same thing. Basically a strong vitamin C booster. And to snack on, they have these bars here. These are uh, made from buffalo meat and uh, elk. These are more of like a jerky kind of thing. They also have uh, protein bars here. My personal favorite are these uh, coconut almond protein bites. These are freaking delicious. And especially in an airplane, I can't stress this enough. Water, 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 water. Stay hydrated. If you do need to add an extra electrolyte, so Onyx has a great product that comes in a tangerine or a lime. Liquid IV is also a great product. And for a little caffeine boost, uh, I like these Celsius packets or green tea is a great option. And for some extra protein while I'm traveling, this is my favorite protein powder here, Dolce Whey. It's the best one on the market, guaranteed. Why is that? Well, if you look at a lot of protein uh, powders and things like that, most of them are byproducts and fillers. And as you can see here, there's only five ingredients not a lot of binders not a lot of fillers not a lot of extra stuff and it has a great uh, nutrition profile as well that I have these uh, go stack uh, containers I'll uh, pack some of that into there and then I can uh, kind of mix them up throughout either a flight or throughout a trip just for an added boost protein and sometimes when you travel sleep is kind of a uh, Kind of a harder thing to come by than sometimes but uh melatonin i prefer liquid version because i feel it absorbs easier for me tends to work better for me okay i hear you i hear you let's get packing okay moving on to traveling outfits uh 
In this case, we're gonna start off with the suit option. Now, I know most people, when they're thinking traveling to uh, warm tropical places, they don't automatically think suit. And if you're going to a casual place like Hawaii or Cabo San Lucas, a lot of places in the Bahamas, I would fully agree with you. But if you are going to a more formal place like, let's say, uh, Bora Bora, the Maldives, uh, Dubai, some places in the Middle East, they do tend to be a bit more formal and some places do require jackets and things like that. So in this case, this is a linen suit along with a linen shirt. And that pairs very well since you're going through airports uh, with a Chelsea style boot. They slip on and off very quickly. Or you can choose to go with more of a loafer option. Or if you even want to be a little bit more casual uh, but still dressed up, uh, a minimal leather sneaker is a great option. Or they also have a great uh, slip-on option as well. All these will work with a suit. Uh, everything from very fancy to very casual. Still very comfortable to travel in. On to a more casual travel outfit. Me personally, I would personally go with a polo. Those pair very well with a chino pant. And great footwear options. These are all great for the airport. They slip on and up easy. You got some Chelsea boots. Or they go with a loafer. Or a minimal leather sneaker. Great professional looking but still casual option. All right, this will be my airport outfit. Nice comfy polo, chino pants, some argyle socks, some easy slip on and off loafers, and a uh, Anson belt, which I have uh, rubber banded up. I'll show you why here in a second, and a watch. For this per first packing cube, I tend to use my packing cubes by category, so we're gonna start with shirts. I'm gonna fit four into here. I have a uh, dressy linen shirt, a short sleeve casual button down, a floral shirt, and a v-neck t-shirt. Some people like to uh, roll their shirts, some people tend to fold. I tend to use a combination of the two, kind of a fold and roll, and these will fit into that little cube. All right, there's cube number one. And for cube number two, I'm gonna use this black one here. I'm gonna reserve this for uh, bottoms. So I got a pair of linen pants as well as three pairs of the hybrid shorts. And there's cube number two. Cube number three, the last one. Gonna pack in this swimwear as well as this uh, beach pool cover up here. And there's cube number three. And in these two cubes here, I have uh, socks and underwear, as well as uh, miscellaneous vitamins and uh, nutrition packs, etc. Can't believe I almost forgot. Hot Tub Club shirt, cube number one. Also bringing a pair of white leather sneakers and a pair of flip-flops. Boom. Now, when traveling with a suit, there's a couple of ways to pack it. One way is to take both the suit and pants, put them onto one, uh, like a travel style hanger, and put it into, uh, this is a hanging garment bag. This folds up into thirds and would basically go into your rolling suitcase. Another option, if you already have a uh, garment style suitcase with uh, wheels, that would be another option, but there is a third way if you're only taking, like say, a duffel bag. Okay, another option to do it is to take your suit jacket and fold it inside out. Next, you'll fold it in half. And then you want to fold it into thirds. This way, the corners aren't fully creased and you have the less actual harsh folds you have, the better, especially with linen because it does tend to wrinkle very easily. Then what you do you would take your suit pants, put the jacket in the middle of them, and then basically you kind of fold this over. 
and fold this over that way there's no harsh creases on the pants either and then uh, if I was putting this into a duffel bag I would put this right on top that way it's not getting uh, mushed down with everything else and this helps prevent a lot a lot of wrinkling and that's how I would pack a suit these two bags here I would consider more of secondary or a weekender bag so we're going to set these two off to the side so the, the two we're going to be working with are the roller and the duffel. And when using a four-wheeled roller, some of the biggest peeps of it are these nubs here on the bottom where the wheels are kind of coming up. And these two bars that they have here for the, uh, the handle of the luggage. But we're going to work around it the best we can. I'm going to show this without a shoe bag but basically we're going to take a set of shoes and where this nub is we're basically going to take the shoe so it holds like that so the shoe still fits in between that gap also takes up the wheel space but it doesn't exactly protrude out and you still have room in between and also room for a packing cube up top so we'll get going on that Okay, so here we have the white leather sneakers. We have the pair of flip-flops as well as packing cube number three We can still add more to this. There's still room Okay, added the socks and underwear a couple more ants and belts along with a couple more buckles and the laundry bag I put in here This we can strap up And secure that in place as you can see I can do this one-handed still got technically could fit more if I wanted to put more loose stuff in there but we're gonna go ahead and close the clamshell and since this is a front lid open we can open this bad boy up Okay, start with a flat surface. Okay, we got packing cubes number one and two. And we got the jewelry case and shoe kit. And lastly, your 311 kit and uh, that Anson belt that I was talking about earlier. Since I want these quick access for TSA, I can keep these at the top of the front open lid I can quick grab these and this the belt I could put on after I get through TSA so can quick slip off the shoes quick uh, quick grab the 311 kit put those in those bin in, in a bin load this up go right through TSA put the belt on afterwards 311 kit away we're good to go And in this example, the only thing left of your secondary bag is your water bottle, your nutrition bag, and electronics bag. Carry on packing at its finest. And you definitely don't want to forget your DOP kit as well. In the secondary bag, got that electronics kit as well as the nutrition pouch. Got a couple extra pairs of sunglasses and the water bottle get to zip this up all right that slides onto the four-wheel roller and even as big as this bag is it still fits underneath the seat in front of me still got plenty of room for souvenirs things like that and hope you guys found this video helpful hope you learned a lot definitely put a lot into this it's a long one i know but be sure to smash the like button for the youtube algorithm subscribe and comment below happy travels